The only constant in software is change. Welcome to the MongoDB podcast. This is the podcast where we talk about software development, data, and all things MongoDB. I'm Michael Lin, and I am your host for today's podcast. Today, we're going to talk about saving money with your MongoDB deployment. Talk about five ways to save money. So stay tuned. Hope you enjoy it. Five ways to reduce costs when you're running your MongoDB instances in the cloud. The first way I'd like to cover is for you to take a look at your clusters that you're running, and perhaps you're running multiple, and make sure that the ones that you don't need to be running 24-7, you pause them. Now, pausing your cluster can be done in one of a couple of ways. You can pause a cluster right from the Atlas UI. The MongoDB Atlas user interface gives you the ability to pause a cluster. But you can also use a nifty Python package written by our very own Joe Drumgool, director of content and advocacy, developer advocacy here at MongoDB. He's put together a package that enables you to leverage the public API for Atlas and pause your clusters programmatically. Now you can pause your clusters for up to 30 days, but if you don't resume them on your own after 30 days, Atlas will automatically resume those clusters for you. You can read more about pausing your clusters at the docs site, docs.mongodb.com. Let's look at another way, number two, scaling your clusters. So you can change the configuration of your MongoDB Atlas cluster at any time. Atlas was designed with scalability in mind, and when scaling down, probably the last thing on your mind is how to prepare for launching and meeting the needs of your application over a long period of time. And perhaps you were very aggressive in making sure that you provisioned enough uh, CPU and RAM for your application, and maybe you went too high. Maybe you cho chose a tier size that is over the maximum requirement of your application. And you can find this out by looking at the, the metrics in the Atlas console. It'll tell you if you're not coming close to consuming all of the RAM and, and CPU that you've provisioned as a part of your deployment process. And if that's the case, then to save money, you can change the configuration of your Atlas cluster and select a smaller tier. Now this is, this is pretty powerful because obviously it's going to reduce the costs and it will be done automatically behind the scenes. So your new cluster size, let's say I'm, for example, I deployed initially on an M40 and the requirements of my application don't quite need uh, the CPU and RAM associated with an M40 tier deployment. I can change the configuration to an M30 and the, all of the, the processes associated with moving the data, deploying the new instances, and migrating over to that new M30 cluster will be done behind the scenes. So it's automating the process saves endless amounts of work. Scaling your cluster down, that's number two. Let's look at number three. Enabling elastic scalability through auto-scaling. Now, MongoDB Atlas was built with scalability bi-directional scalability in mind. So scaling up and scaling down. And of course, as we discussed in way number two, you can scale your cluster down manually, but you can also scale automatically. And there are two ways, two sets of resource that we scale automatically with MongoDB Atlas. The first is with disk. We can enable disk auto scale. Now that works in one direction. So we provide additional disk space to your clusters Optionally, if you choose disk auto scaling, we'll add disk space to your cluster in the event that you're running out of disk. Pretty powerful to avoid application outages. Now, the second way is for us to enable compute auto scaling. So that means that you're going to be able to select a large or an upper limit, a maximum size cluster, a maximum tier, and a minimum tier size for your application, for your MongoDB deployment. And what's going to happen is Atlas is going to evaluate consumption of those resources along two key metrics, CPU utilization and memory utilization. And depending upon your utilization of these metrics, you will be able to automatically scale between cluster sizes, between cluster tiers. 
So this is available. Compute Auto Scale is available on M10 tier and above for Azure and GCP and all general clusters, M10 and higher on AWS. So to enable this, you go into the MongoDB Atlas UI and select Auto Scale Cluster Tier. And that'll give you the ability to select an upper limit and a lower limit. You'll be able to uh, choose the tier size for both the minimum cluster size and the maximum cluster size. There's a drop down to select those tiers. And you'll also in that same auto scale section of the configuration be able to select storage auto scaling. So how does that work? Well, your application is gonna be consuming CPU and memory. Atlas is gonna evaluate the consumption of these two key metrics. And here's the rule set. So if you're wondering how it evaluates whether or not to execute a, an auto scale operation, let's look at let's look at moving down to a smaller instance, for example. So Atlas is gonna check CPU and memory. And if these two conditions are met, it's going to execute an auto scale operation. The first is the average CPU utilization and memory utilization over the past 72 hours has not gone over 50%. And the cluster has not been scaled down manually or automatically in the past 72 hours. So if those two, two conditions are met, then an auto scale operation will be executed. You can learn more about this in the docs as always, docs.mongodb.com. I'll place a link in the show notes if you wanna learn more about that. So that's way number three, enabling compute auto scaling. Let's look at number four. This one is obvious. It's, uh, I call it cleaning up and optimizing. Now you're always going to want to be doing this, but some of us, uh, me included, I'm, I'm somewhat messy at times and I launch and deploy sample data sets. Perhaps I, I work on a, a given business problem for a while and then I get distracted and move on and forget about that data that I've been working with. It's important if you want to maximize the efficiency of your deployments and reduce your expenses, take a look at the data that you're storing, especially if you have backups enabled. Now, you don't want to be backing up data that you don't need. So on a regular basis, make a plan to evaluate the data sets, the databases that you have deployed in your clusters. That's way number four, clean up and optimize. Way number five, terminate your clusters. Now, obviously, you can't terminate all of your clusters. If you have active applications, your, your, your users are, are going to be pretty upset if they don't have access to the data. But what I'm suggesting is that perhaps you've deployed more clusters than you typically need to be available at any given time. Perhaps you worked on a, a, a problem or a, an opportunity or a project and that cluster is no longer needed. You can terminate that cluster and that's obviously going to reduce the costs even over pausing it. If you pause it, it's going to reduce, but if you terminate it, it's going to go away. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to go down to zero. It's not going to cost you anything. There are some cautions, a few caveats here. Uh, terminating a cluster is going to delete the data, obviously, associated with that cluster, but it's also going to delete the snapshots. So if you delete a cluster or terminate a cluster, you will not have access to the backup snapshots for that cluster. So please, before terminating, make a plan to backup your data and take that backup, download it, and make it available, secure, secure the backup somewhere, uh, so that you have it in the event that you want to back it up and, and restore it. Right. One more bonus tip, and that is take a look at your backup configuration. If you deployed your cluster previously, uh, you may be using continuous backups. Continuous backups are powerful, uh, but very expensive. They cost, continuous backups cost anywhere from $1.50 per gigabyte to $2.50 per gigabyte, depending on the database size and the retention schedule. Now, uh, continuous backups are going to be deprecated soon. So you will need to move to a different backup method. That, that backup method is called cloud provider snapshots. Now this is gonna be a much more cost efficient way to back up your data uh, comparatively. So rather than $1.50 to $2.50 per gigabyte, it's gonna be about 14 cents per gigabyte. So. Cloud provider snapshots provide localized backup storage using native snapshot functionality of the cloud provider you're using. So AWS, GCP, or 
Microsoft Azure. So there you have it, five actually, six with the bonus tip, ways to reduce your expenses while managing your databases in MongoDB Atlas. I hope you found this, this podcast episode valuable. I hope you'll save some money with it. Please check out the show notes for links to the documentation and to Joe's amazing Python library that'll allow you to pause and, re- and resume your Atlas clusters. You can find MongoDB all over social media, at MongoDB. Check us out in the community. So you can join there. It's at community.mongodb.com. We've also launched something new for developers out there in the community. You check out developer.mongodb.com. There's all sorts of great, interesting articles you can learn. You can interact with other developers in the community. If you enjoyed the episode, head on over to your favorite podcast network and leave us a review. Maybe tell folks what they're missing. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great day.